Alrighty, today's call to worship today is found in Psalms 46. God is our protection and our strength. He always helps us in times of trouble. So we will not be afraid if the earth shakes or if the mountains fall into the sea. We will not fear even if the oceans roar and foam or if the mountains shake at the raging sea. There is a river which brings joy to the city of God. This is the holy place where God Most High lives. God is in that city, and so it will not be shaken. God will help her at dawn. Nations trouble and kingdom, kingdoms shake. God shouts and the earth crumbles. The Lord of heaven's armies is with us, and the, and the God of Jacob is our protection. Come and see what the Lord has done. He has done amazing things on the earth. He stops wars everywhere on the earth. He breaks all bows and spears and burns up the chariots with fire. God says, Be quiet and know that I am God. I will be supreme over all the nations. I will be supreme in the earth. The God of the Lord of heaven's armies is with us, and the God of Jacob is our protection. All righty. Can I get everybody who is in VBS to come up here and help us sing Tis So Sweet? So we're going to be singing the traditional hymn, Tis So Sweet, but it's going to be a little bit different. So pay attention to the little differences and little changes that we may have made. You know the songs, you got it. And I invite you all to stand as we sing. The lyrics should be up on the screen and familiar to all of you guys. You gotta know the dance moves. <laughs> for our prayer song, if you are able. We're going to be singing, Hear Our Prayer, Our Lord. 
And kids, put your hands together like we practiced in VBS. After this, you're in, you're in the right place at the right time. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for everything that you do for us, Lord, and for all that you've blessed us with. We pray for all the VBS helpers this week and wonderful kids who have come here and volunteered their time to be with you, Lord. We pray that um, the potluck will go well, and we thank you for everybody spending time to make uh, food for everybody, Lord, and we bless the Sabbath. We hope that everybody will be safe with all of our loved ones and friends. We thank you for all that you do for us. In your heavenly name we pray. Amen. Okay, it's time that we are going to receive our offering this morning. Our offering, as you see listed in the bulletin, is for the church budget. So as you prayer prayerfully decide what to give, remember our church um, campus here, the activities, the programs that we support, and um, give generously and return your tithes as well. Let's pray for our offering before our VBS helpers Help us collect the offering. Dear awesome God, we thank you for this Sabbath. We thank you for the opportunity that we have to be here. We thank you for all the boys and girls that are here and the grown-ups and their moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas. We ask you to pour out a special blessing today. We ask um, you to bless the offering that we're about to receive so that your love can be known to more and more people and that we can love you just like you love us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
everybody. Okay, so my name is Kayla, and you know, we've kind of been stuck here on this island, and we've been stuck here for a while, and it's kind of my fault. You see, I may or may not have crashed our raft into a rock, and well, we've been stuck here for all of VBS, and, and thankfully everybody's forgiven me, and we even met a new friend named Trevor. But now we just got to put all of our heads together and figure out how we're going to get off this island and get back home. I sure hope we can get back home soon. I miss my family so much. I feel so lonely without them. It's like a big piece of my heart is just missing. I'm sorry, Emma. I know. You know, we can feel pretty lonely sometimes, but we know that whenever we feel lonely... Jesus! That's right. Jesus can always rescue us. And, you know, we're out here with all of our friends, too, and we're here for you, so you never have to feel lonely. Hey, come on. Let's go check out what Hannah's doing over here. Hey, Hannah. Hi. You know, just sitting here doing nothing on this island. You know, I'm really worried we won't be able to get back home in time. You know, school's starting pretty soon, and I don't want to miss seeing my friends. I'm sorry. I know. To be honest, I feel a little worried, too. We have been stuck here for a while, but I'm sure you'll make it back for the first day of school. And, you know, whenever we're worried, we know that... Jesus That's right. Jesus always rescues us, no matter where we are or where we're going. And so we know that whenever we're worried, he's here for us. Hey, I wonder... Actually, sorry, can I share something with you guys? Yeah, of course. Well, to be honest, I've been struggling a lot. I I just feel like such a silly person, you know. I just can't believe that I did something so wrong, and, and I crashed our ship, and I know that everyone's forgiven us, but I just feel like I've been doing everything wrong lately. Well, Kayla, what did you just get finished telling Emma and I? That Jesus rescues? Yeah. Whenever you struggle, Jesus rescues. And whenever you do wrong, Jesus rescues. It can be hard sometimes when we mess up and we struggle. Know that Jesus can always help you. And we can too. Thank you, guys. That really means a lot. You know, it can be pretty tough here on this island sometimes. But hey, let's go see how Samantha's doing with our ship. Let's see if we can get back home. Hey, Samantha, how's it going? Just awful. We can't get back home on this on this raft with all these holes. I've been trying and trying, but nothing seems to be working. Well, Samantha, Jesus can give you the power. You just have to ask. We know that whenever we feel powerless, Jesus, Jesus rescues. Rescue. I think that we all need to say a short prayer and asking Jesus for all of these things, because I know that we need a little bit more saving to get off this island. You're right. Lord, please rescue us from wor from loneliness, worry, struggles, r wrongdoings, and powerlessness. We know that you are mighty and can rescue us from anything. Amen. Amen. Wait, I have an idea. We've learned about God and seen him so much throughout this whole week. And maybe we could decorate this raft even more to show that. That's a great idea. You know, I've seen God in so many ways here recently. I remember seeing God when I saw my friends help each other out. That was amazing. What did you see, Samantha? I've seen so many beautiful flowers, and any time I prayed for something, he would always be there for me and give it to me. That's amazing. What about you, Emma? Well, this morning I looked out, and I saw all of the animals and a bunch of, like, little bunnies running around and being so happy, and I knew that God was the one that made it that way. And I, this morning, when we woke up, had a feeling of hope that we might be getting off this island soon. And I think God was giving me that hope. That's definitely a God already. It looks so pretty now. It does. You're right, it does. Hey, you know what? I think we patched up enough holes so we can get home. No way. What? That's so exciting. We can go home now. 
Get ready to sing. Here we go. Through every storm of life, I know you're by my side. So I am holding on to your promises. You are the God who holds my future, all my dreams. So I am holding on. chance to sing a brand new song you opened up my eyes to see when you rescued me oh, rescued me oh, you showed the way when there was no Alrighty, if I could invite up all the kids one more time, we're going to share with you guys our theme song for this week about God never letting go of us and always protecting us and always being there for us and always rescuing us. So everybody come on up to the front and we'll sing our theme song, Never Let Go of Me. Through every storm of life, I know you're by my side, so I am holding on to your promises. You are the God who holds my future, all my dreams. Me 
hope when hope was all but gone a second chance to sing a brand new song you open up my eyes to see when you rescued me rescued me you showed the way when there was no way out cleared up my mind when you erased all doubt you made me strong when i was weak yeah you rescued me rescued me through every storm of life i know you're by my side so i am holding on to your promises you are the god who holds my future on my dreams so i am I'm holding on to you. You are my God. I know you'll see me through. Hey! You are my God. I'm holding on to you. You are my God. I know you'll see me through. Hey! You are my God. I'm holding on to you. You are my God. I know you'll see me through. Hey! You are my God. I'm holding on to you. You are my God, I know you'll see me through. Hey! Through every storm of life, I know you're by my side. So I am holding on to your promises. You are the God of all. some baskets for our lambs offering that would be wonderful so go ahead and grab a basket and then pick up the offering as you guys walk down the aisle
All right, well, our kids are making their way back. I'm inviting you all to take a look up here. Each night at Shipwreck VBS, we had a different Bible verse, so I've asked our friends to read them for us, starting with day one. The Lord comes to the rescue each time. Psalms 39, 19. The Lord will hold me close. Psalms 27, 10. Be still and know that I am God. Psalm 46, 10. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead. Ephesians 1, 19 through 20. Thank you, guys. You can have a seat if you would like. All right, before Pastor Mike comes up, just wanted to give you a couple of interesting facts about our shipwreck week. We had about almost 80 kids this week. Seven of them were our special needs group. So I think we should all be really proud that we were able to offer a special needs class this year. And today, following potluck at 2 o'clock, we have a truck coming that will be taking all of our beautiful shipwrecked island hut decorations, and they'll be passing them to our next VBS church who will share and enjoy all of these beautiful decorations. So I left them all up so that as you make your way home or over to potluck today, you could see um, the beautiful decorations that some we have made and some that we have shared, and some of the classrooms that are still open. I would love for you to just take a peek. We had a movie room, which is still open, and that's where they watched a movie each night. And there was our craft room, which I left open in the potluck decorated, and our tide pool room, which is decorated with sea life and fish. And so whatever is still open, I would love for you guys to take a look and enjoy the decorations that were available. And I'm wanting you to know that this would not have happened without Linda. <laughs> Tell you what, Linda has become part of a consortium of family ministry people in this valley. That's what she was just describing to you that stretches far and wide. We do the same program and we produce something that the kids of this valley can actually appreciate week after week in different churches. I want you to know that as pastor of this church, I appreciate that association because we are all in the business of bringing our kids closer to Jesus, are we not? Yes. And that we can share in that in the Santa Clarita Valley is something that Linda and I are very passionate about and that we're, we're grateful that we get to be involved. A couple of weeks ago, we were the ones with the U-Haul truck that went to the Methodist church. And they were taking down, and, and literally as they were taking down, we and our crew, which we want to thank so very much, the, the total crew this week has been absolutely awesome, has been Linda's support, and that has been very, very wonderful. We brought that stuff over here. We've set it up. During the week, it's just gotten better and better. And I, I, believe, I believe that the kids, when you see them paying such close attention as you have today, you will agree with us that uh, when we do interesting things like this in church, which, by the way, I'm going to give an ad right now, children's church twice a month, first Sabbath, second, third Sabbath of the month, first and third Sabbaths of the month, we have a program similar to this for kids. Okay? I, I think you might agree with me that asking a kid to sit through an adult program is a bit of a pain. All right, so we know that, and so we're making preparations for our families to be involved in a worship service at least twice a month, okay? So thank you so much for trusting us with your kids. Linda, thank you so much for all that you have done to make this happen. She is tireless, ladies and gentlemen, tireless. <laughs> and this is not just a one-woman show, so there is a huge, huge thank you list that I'm trying to compile because... We had the Quinteros who helped make our t-shirts this year, the Frutos Quinteros, Scottos, 
Pastor Mike, we all went and got the U-Haul and loaded up in 118 or 20 degree weather, all these beautiful sets. There was our kitchen staff who provided a dinner for our, our youth every night at 430 the women's group, there was so many, I don't want to leave anyone out, so I shouldn't go down this road, but thank you, because it was a small army to um, put this together, and I, I love it, my kids know, my husband knows, I drive everybody nuts with VBS, because I just think it's super fun to offer this way to teach kids about Jesus. Well, Linda, I think, I think these individuals, by their attendance today, think it's super fun too, right? Yeah. All right. I'm so glad this was left up here because I'm going to start with it today. Uh, just because we're having so much fun, I think that I should be able to have lots of fun too. Go ahead, you can do yours. Okay, this is, this is a Jewish toy. Do you know when it gets used in church? You know. It gets used in church when they tell the story of Haman, Mordecai, and Esther. So someday we're going to do that in church. So keep tuned because we're going to do this in church and we're going to hand out dreidels. Actually, dreidels are the spinning ones, aren't they? Okay, these are the noisemakers. And every time Haman's name gets mentioned, it's boo! And every time uh, Mordecai's name gets mentioned, it's yay! But there's lots of noise and there's lots of activity. And, and you know what? It cements the meaning of the story into the minds of our children. And that's why we do VBS. That's why we do Children's Church. I know that as parents, as grandparents, as people of this, this congregation, this, this larger friendship group that we have, you are interested in our kids knowing that Jesus rescues. Now, those texts, those texts that were read, I, my, my job is to, is to kind of pull them all together. But you know what? I, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do one better. Are you ready? We're going to have a story about a shipwreck. Are you ready? Here we go. There was a time in, in, in Apostle Paul's life where he decided that he must go to Jerusalem and his friend said, don't go to Jerusalem because there are some nasty guys in Jerusalem that, that, that want to do nasty things to you. Don't go, Paul. Do you think he listened? I, I think he was like my friend right here. I tell him things to do. He doesn't necessarily think that they're the right thing to do because he knows what he needs to do. And he goes and does it. And most of the time, you know what? He's right. He's right. He knows what he wants to do and he keeps on going. In fact, what happened to Paul was exactly what they predicted would happen and that he was arrested. He was arrested and they put him in chains and they put him in a, in a prison and then they, they started transporting him because when, when they, when they put him in prison and they accused him, Paul said, you know what? I want to appeal my case to Caesar. And Caesar was the big king of the Roman Empire. I want to stand before Caesar and tell him, I am not wrong. I am falsely accused. And you know what? In Roman Empire, that was the right of every Roman citizen. You could appeal your case to Caesar. And if that was the case, then you had to be shipped off, literally in a boat, you had to be shipped off all the way to Rome. And so we find in Acts 26 and around in that area before he's, he's, he's before Agrippa and then he is sent by King Agrippa to Rome. And so in Acts chapter 27, you have a storm that takes place and it is a storm that Paul said would happen. He said, we shouldn't sail. We shouldn't, we shouldn't sail. We shouldn't go because there's going to be a storm. But there was some nice winds and the sailors thought, you know, this is good weather. We should go. And so they disobeyed. What did we learn this week? Even when you are wrong, Jesus saved. And guess what? This story goes just like that. They're in the midst of this amazing storm. Do you know how long it went for? Over two weeks. And they didn't eat. 
They hardly drank. All they were doing was trying to keep the ship together. And at the end, at the end, they were literally throwing their food overboard. They were throwing the tackle overboard. And then finally, they did listen. They did listen to Paul. Because Paul said, last night, an angel came to me and said, we're all going to survive. Nobody is going to die. The next morning, though, he caught some sailors. They were dropping a lifeboat over the side, and they were going to get in that lifeboat because they thought, heck with this, I'm going to save myself. You know what Paul said to the to the centurion, to the captain of the guard? He said, look, if those guys get in that boat, I cannot guarantee their safety. They have to stay with this boat if they want to be saved. So they cut the ropes, and they stayed with the boat. Later on, as the waves were pounding the back of that ship and literally breaking it apart on a sandbar just on the side of Malta, the island of Malta, everybody that could swim jumped into the water. And those that couldn't swim, they grabbed onto a piece of the broken ship and the waves took them into the shore. And as Paul told them, not one person died. Not one person died. The really cool thing happened next. They made a fire to get themselves warm because it was cold and they were wet. And as Paul was picking up some brushwood and putting it onto the fire, out of the brushwood came a viper. And it, the Bible says it latched on to his hand. And so here's Paul with a snake dangling from his hand. And all the villagers were going, ooh, he, it, he, he's a murderer. He must be a murderer because he made it out of the sea. The sea didn't kill him, but now certainly this viper is going to kill him and that's going to be justice. Well, Paul just took that viper and flicked it off into the fire and he didn't die. And suddenly the people were going, there's something very strange about this guy. It just so happened there was a very nice man on the island that took them in and he gave them food and shelter. All of these over 200 people on the ship, by the way. This is not a small operation. Over 200 people on the ship, he takes care of them. And his dad is sick. So Paul says, can I pray for him? Paul comes in there, he prays, he lays hands on him and his father gets well. He had dysentery. He was going to die. Then all the other people on that island heard that, that this man Paul was healing people and they all, they brought all their sick people to Paul and he healed them. Do you know that they stayed on that island almost three months and they were taken care of? And then they were given a ship that had originally come from Alexandria and that ship took them on their journey and finally Paul got to Rome. But you know what? The, the Roman soldiers trusted him so much by this time that they didn't even put him in prison. They put him in a house with just one soldier. And they said, you stay here because all your friends, all your friends need to come and see you and you need to see them. We don't need to put you in prison because we know you're not running away because you want to see Caesar. And of course, you're going to see Caesar because not one of the people on that ship died. We believe you now, Paul. My friends, in this, in this week, we have learned, we have, we have gone around and around and around the bush many, many times on this one issue that no matter whether we are maybe a little sad, maybe, maybe we feel like we did something wrong, maybe we are lonely, we learned many things. And every single time, what did we learn, kids? That Jesus rescued. I hope you got the point, moms, dads, everybody, that the island that we've been talking about is where? It's this earth. And we're, we're, we're shipwrecked. We're shipwrecked on this earth. And like Paul on the island of Malta, we still have a place that we need to be going. We still need to get to heaven. We still need to plead our case before God and we want to be in His presence. Thank God for Jesus who allows us to do that on a daily basis, yes? 
But at the same time, I know that all of us are looking very much forward to Jesus coming back, taking us home so that we can live together as a big family just like this in his presence. We need to be rescued. And if you could have been here the other night, you would have seen us. We handed out glow sticks. Some of you know that because they came home, we handed out glow sticks. We turned out the lights and I said, put your flare in the sky. Tell Jesus that you need to be rescued. Because the fact is that I hope all of us come to that place in our lives where we know that there is no future that is of any length of time without Jesus. And that without Jesus, the plan that God has given us for saving us, for rescuing us off of this planet in its current form, little little shout out to my friend Eric who, who loves hymns, uh, this world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. I like to say, they got it wrong. This world is our home, right? This world, this planet is our home. It's going to be fixed up by God and He is going to bring us back here and He is going to live with us. Is that not what He promises? God with men. God with humans. That's what Emmanuel means and He has promised He's going to do it for the entire world. So we learned this week that He is first going to rescue us and then he's going to bring us back to an earth made new and we will live with him forever and ever and ever. I was with some friends just yesterday. Had the opportunity to do a funeral for a very dear friend of mine. And I want you to know that I'm going to say the same thing to you now that I said to them with his casket right beside me. As we get older, folks, and you youngins, You'll get to feel this way soon enough. Life is going by very quickly. And when you get to be like some of you who are, you know, reached the 60 mark, maybe you've reached the 70 mark, you realize, hey, this is not enough. I don't think this is a, a very long life at all. And you're thinking, oh, I hope I live till I'm 90 or 100. And then you talk to the people who are 90 and 100 and you say, it's not a very long life. So here's my here's my my question to you. How many of you really really want to live forever? Yeah, you want to live forever? Well, I've got news for you. Jesus has given us a way to be rescued off of this island and that he promises that we can live forever. I say that's really good news and it's the kind of news that this world needs right now. Because as we look around in the world today, we, 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 we get kind of a queasy feeling and we, we just wonder how it's all going to play out. And we realize there is really not any other good solution to the problems of this world except for Jesus. He is the plan. He is the solution. He is the way off of the island. He is the way back to the island, back to this world one day. He is our creator God. And here we are on a Sabbath day that he created and we're honoring the creator God who will one day bring us back to this world and recreate it and here is where we will have church every week. Amen. Every week on an earth made new. I say that's a really good future and we can be proud of it. We can be thankful that Jesus has provided the pathway back to God for us. Thank you, kids, for coming to VBS. May you never, ever forget the stories that you have learned this week. May you never, ever forget that Jesus rescues. Amen. All right, if I could ask the kids to come up with me one more time. We're going to sing our closing song soon and very soon. Rejoicing and singing about the day where we sing our King.
people want to say this is the future of the church. I say no. This is the church. This is part of the church. This is a, a very precious part of the church. And I again want to thank Linda and everybody who participated to make these kids have such a wonderful week this week. May you in your family time continue on what has happened here. If you want a copy of anything that we have done this week, please see Linda about that. There are songs to be had. There are scriptures to be read. And these can be done repeatedly. And I would encourage you as families to get around the Word of God, to sing these songs, because your kids know them. And they can teach them to you. And you too can sing, soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Would you stand with me as we have closing prayer? Father God, we thank you. You have entrusted us with lives with little humans who who are amazing individuals who have such such brains such lives such personalities and lord you have asked us to teach them about you we have done that this week we pray that these lessons will be embedded that they will never forget and that they will know that whatever happens to them in life you will be there to rescue them father we're thankful that we can be a part of a great big family the human family, that you are interested in taking home with you very soon, soon and very soon, that we may stand before our King and our God and say, you have saved us. We are here because of you. We long to spend eternity with you, Jesus. We are grateful that you have made a way. Now, as we depart from this place, send your Holy Spirit with us to lead us and to guide us in this coming week, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. amen and amen. God bless you all. Remember, there's lunch awaiting those who need it. Have your kids. Hug them tight. We love them. <laughs>